Hi everyone! Welcome back to our homestead kitchen. Got another day of food prep going on. Hello, Frost. You want to know what I'm making? Hot pockets! <laughs> so Matt is making a bunch of like little calzone type things for the freezer. But he's going to call them hot pockets because it just brings joy to his life, I think. <laughs> Hot Pockets. Well, he's working on his Hot Pockets over there. <laughs> Actually, he's been helping me a lot today. We have yeah, been... I say, excuse I me. know, this is like all Matt's work is here. We have been peeling, peeling potatoes. Matt has been chopping, chopping potatoes. And we are going to can some potatoes because even though our potatoes from our garden didn't do great, we bought 150 pounds of potatoes. So, we probably will store some. We're working on our red potatoes right now, and these were getting a little soft, so we needed to get them done. Hopefully we have time, maybe this week, to get the others taken care of. We'll probably put some in storage, but we're probably going to put all of our own grown ones in storage. Last year was our first time canning potatoes, and it seemed so silly. So many people we knew were teasing us about canning potatoes because they're like, you can store potatoes, they last a while. Like, why are, you, why are you doing this? Potatoes are affordable, not a big deal. But I ended up, we were given a big bag of potatoes and I needed to put them to use. And when we, when we canned them, what we learned is we love them. So really that alone is a great reason to can potatoes. We loved them. They were so handy to have for fried potatoes basically dumped them in a hot pan, fried them up and added some seasoning and they were delicious. Also super handy to have when we are busy at Christmas time for just some real good home food. We can make mashed potatoes really fast because they're basically already cooked. Thank you, Leroy. Awesome. pizza sauce for the Hot Pockets. Sarah, you comfortable? Yeah, I'm super comfy. This is working great. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing here? Are you recording me? I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's much better. everyone so this is a whole nother day sorry we started cut, cutting our potatoes and we just didn't get around to canning them but I have been getting a lot of requests lately to see how I'm using my Presto digital electric canner more specifically so I want to make sure I get into that a little bit and we'll get these potatoes done so we're going to be canning these in quart jars and I'm going to be using wide mouth quart jars as much as I can I think I'm going to run out and I'll have to switch to regular mouth just because potatoes are a little bit bigger it's going to be easier to pour them out of these that's why I want the wide mouth but I believe I can fit five quart jars in my precise digital canner. So this isn't very many. No, I think that's one of the biggest complaints about the machine. But because it's so plug and go, like there's a lot more upsides than there are downsides. So let's get started. I'll show you how many potatoes we got cut up. This stock pot, yes, is like three quarters full of cut up red potatoes and we just have them soaking in really cold water and I'm getting all my pots ready on my stove top so it's a little crowded I don't have a ton of space here for this um, but I've got one pot for water I'm getting to a boil and I'm going to be blanching my potatoes so what we do is we blanch these in small batches for two minutes each and this is just to cook thoroughly the inside of the potato basically whenever you're canning something and we will be pressure canning today whenever you're canning something you want to make sure your items are hot your jars are hot everything is hot is almost always best so this is the water that will be used for the blanching and then I've got a pot ready this is just the insert to my instant pot use what you've got so I'm going to be putting the potatoes as they finish up in here so I have a lid just to kind of keep it warm I've also got another pot of water in the back heating up now that's going to be my water for filling my jars I went ahead and took out my insert. It looks like this. I'm actually using the older model first. I'll probably have both going here shortly, but I'm starting with this one. 
So it's got the inside piece to keep everything off the bottom. And then this one has three lines. The newer model has just one line. So in this older model, we just go to the bottom line and we fill it with filtered water. I always use filtered water in mine. I just have hard water. I don't really want to mess with that. We end up otherwise with just kind of some gunk on the outside of our jars. So I've got some filtered water here. This is about two quarts and that line is going to be about three. So whenever I'm canning, I get my Brita filled up so I can have more filtered water. Then I'm going to add my jars. So my jars are already washed and cleaned. I'm going to add them about half full of water. This is just so they're not jumping around during the heating process. I'm not going to take the time to use filtered water because when I'm pressure canning, I'm not going to use this water in my pot. When I'm water bath canning, I dump this water back in the pot. And in that case, I use filtered water. Alright, I've got the five jars in here. Now it's important when I put it back in the pot that I make sure that the bottom is dry. I don't want any water to get on my heating element. Now you can certainly do all of these steps, fill it right in here, put your jars right in here. That was just for the sake of you seeing kind of what exactly I'm doing. All right, I'm taking my lid and I'm just going to put this on the top. It's really easy to get it on top. There's a little kind of notch here drawn and then a line that says install or remove. If you line that up and then twist it till it says locked, you know this is on. So just like that. Um, then this handle comes down and you twist it into place. Now this model is my older model, so it's got my venting pipe is in here. The newer model it's in front. It's got my regulator in the back. The newer model has it in the front. Before you get started, whether you're pressure canning or water bath canning, you take the regulator off and set it somewhere where you're not going to lose it. Now for water bath canning, this regular regulator is not needed. For pressure canning, it is. So we turn this dial, it just goes back and forth from pressure can and boiling water can. And when we get to pressure can, you can either push the black button or push play to select it. The next thing you do is select the time for pressure canning. So pressure canning potatoes is a 40 minute process in quart jars. And then again, I just press the black knob or press play. And then it'll tell me to enter my jars, which I already did. I always do that step first. Um, and now it'll go into the warming phase. If you're wondering where on earth I'm getting these times, like how do I need, know that you pressure can potatoes for 40 minutes, this is like my go-to book. Anything by Ball, I feel very good about. I feel like very trusted with Ball as a resource. So I use the complete book of home preserving from Ball. But if you don't have this, go to the website National Center for Home Food Preservation. It's the United States website for how to safely um, store food, basically. So they have everything from how to safely water bath can, pressure canning, all the way to freezing, and I think they even have things about like dehydrating and things. There's so many interesting things on there that you can read up on. So don't worry about having this. You can always go to that website and get the times there. I'm just a book person. I love having just something I can open up and it makes it quick for me. So while this is warming, I'll get started on the potatoes. So I always wait before I'm going to blanch something till I've got like this rolling boil. It's best, right? So we've got this rolling boil, bubbles, my water's ready. I'm going to get a scoop of potatoes ready. So as you can see, I'm not gonna do too many at once. I think the more you do, the faster you're cooling down the water and it just ends up becoming a problem. You love my new hot pads? Aren't those cute? They're from my grandma. She does an awesome job. All right. So I'm gonna put these in. Now the reason I'm using my basket is because it's so handy to just be able to dump them in and then scoop them all back out with it. Um, but I do have a slotted spoon in case it's a little more difficult. I'd love to leave this in, but it's plastic. It's just gonna eventually melt. Set a timer for two minutes. Two minutes starting now. All right, I've got my potatoes blanching. 
This is gonna take a while. And I don't know if we've even made a dent in these. All right, I've got my 100 pounds of, these are like, I don't even know what they're called, the bigger regular potatoes. And then this is what I've got left of our red potatoes. They're down to here. And we've had mashed potatoes maybe three times since getting that big and doing all this. <laughs> all right, so I've got my timer going off. So I'm going to remove this and try to get these potatoes out as swiftly as I can. too bad all right I left some behind Let's see if I can get them all all right I want to know does anyone do this differently because I do have like a small metal colander I could probably place in the pot and take out but I feel like it would be more trouble than it's worth so curious, do you have any like secret tips to that? So before I put this next batch in, I make sure this comes back to boiling. Now sometimes this will just be really quick and other times I might have added too much or whatnot and it'll take a little while to get back up there. Because I've got so much going on on my stovetop, I'm not even going to bother trying to can over there. I want to be able to um, keep going with the potatoes within reason so that I will can on my countertop. So when my water is boiling and I'm ready to um, fill my jars, I'll just bring it over here. Now, I like to fill it over there and keep the water going because I think that is probably best practice. I just don't have space. So I'm getting salt ready. I use canning salt. Um, I'm trying to learn a little bit more about salt and what salts are okay for canning and what are not. Um, so I'm definitely trying to gain more knowledge in that category, but for now, I just use the typical canning, canning pickling salt. It's a green box um, and you can find it usually on the very bottom shelf in the herb section at your grocery store. All right, when I am selecting what flats and bands I use, I tend to go with Ball or Kerr brand. They're, as far as I'm concerned, a safe, trusted source made in the United States. There's a lot of new brands out there and there's a lot of things going around with what's actually in them, what's in the rubber seals. And right now I don't feel comfortable using anything but Ball Kerr or Golden Harvest. I just hardly ever find that they're all related brands basically. So I'm using brand new flats. Um, I think when you can, you should always use new flats, but there is no safety issue with reusing flats. The issue is that your things might not seal. And after going through all of this work, the last thing we want is um, our lids not to seal and lose all that hard work. My rings I do reuse and since I remove these to store my items I can use them again and again they don't get rusty nearly as easy but every once in a while they do. They don't last forever so as you can see this one's kind of got some stuff on it that I didn't catch before it went into storage so I just go ahead and get rid of that one, recycle it, and use new. Now you always want to wash your rings and your flats before you use them and just inspect them because sometimes you'll get flats that the box got damaged and the whole side is dented. You know it's not going to fit firmly around your jar and it's likely not going to seal so don't waste your time trying to use it. Um, these are not recommended to boil as said on the back. In the past they were, they are no longer. Instead you should be washing them with hot soapy water. So sometimes I'll already be washing jars and I'll have a sink full of hot soapy water. I don't right now. So instead I just use my bottle brush and my water gets extremely hot and I just wash them like this. Oops, I do have jars in the sink. I almost forgot to show you real, one really important step. After I'm done blanching my potatoes, I always rinse them. Now, because I want to keep them hot, I'm going to use hot water. The reason for this is to get rid of any of those extra starches. You'll know, to, you'll know if you can your potatoes and they're too starchy because it'll almost look like they're canned in gelatin 
as opposed to just chunks of potato and water. Now some potatoes are definitely more susceptible to this than others and you can alleviate this problem by simply when you open your jar, if it is too starchy like that, just rinsing off your potatoes. Now I think canned potatoes make the perfect potatoes to fry kind of for like a breakfast potato. But they also make great mashed potatoes too, in which case maybe that starchiness isn't so bad. So I like to rinse them until the water coming out is pretty clear. If it's still um, running out and looking milky, then the potatoes are still pretty starchy. All right, so I got that lovely beep from my electric canner. It says, fill jars. Exactly what it means, fill jars. All right, I've got both canners set up now, warmed up, and I'm ready to fill all of my jars. I've got a few potatoes still warm, already rinsed, ready to go here so I can just start filling jars. Now, I got a message the other day from um, someone I know saying that I didn't show both canners going in a video, and I was like, oh, it's kind of funny. So the reason I didn't show both canners going is because I haven't been running them both in my kitchen. So what I've got going on now is I've got one on the end of the counter and the other one's actually in our living room. And I've been splitting them up a lot so they're not running off the same um, circuit and basically uh, cutting power because that was happening at our house. Although I could run two, I couldn't do anything else. And I still need to make supper and do other things throughout the day and I will definitely probably have my Instapot on and other things and I don't wanna risk my canner shutting off right in the middle. So I've got one on my counter, the other one in my living room. All right, I dumped out the water out of my hot jar. Can you see the steam there? It is steaming. And I'm going to start filling it with potatoes. Now the headspace on most vegetables is an inch and that's what it is for potatoes. Oops, lost a few. inch is kind of a really nice marker because it's just right where this first lip is. I'm going to fill my jar with the boiling water. Oh, and you know what? I do add salt to these, a teaspoon per quart. I'm going to just add that now before I add my water. It doesn't really much matter where you add it. All right, so one inch headspace. I'm also going to debubble this, which means I'll probably lose a little bit, so I usually go just over knowing that I will lose a little bit of that. I misplaced my chopsticks, so back to using these for now. Now all I'm doing is trying to get rid of air pockets in here. Now not so much a safety issue, just more of a quality issue. It just looks prettier without those air bubbles trapped in the jar. All right, so we're gonna check that. If I need to, I'll top it off, I do not. And then I always wipe the rim of my jars. Now, chances are this is just gonna be water on my jar, but when you're canning, just making the good habits, I think is really important. So if you're canning something that's greasier, like broth um, or meat or something like that, there's a greater chance, or even like jellies and jams, there's a greater chance that something will get on that rim. Now with the Presto Digital Canner, I do kind of yank on these and I've heard a lot of people having issues with their ceiling. I have not had any issues and I think that's a huge part. First time I pressure canned in it, my rings basically fell off when I was done and I was like, that doesn't seem right. So they're tighter now. All right, we're gonna put our lid on lock it down and then we just push the black button in or play after we filled our jars it's gonna go on to heating all right so after my canner goes through that heating stage it goes to a venting stage since we're pressure canning so I believe it's 10 minutes we're already on six here and then it'll beep and it will just continually beep and it'll say put regulator on so that's the next step we're waiting for 
All right, you can hear this put regulator on beep. I always use my hot pad, line up the arrow to canning, and put it on. And again, push the black button or push the play. Now we're counting down. All right, so after it got up to temp, my 40 minutes counted down, and now we're at the cooling mode. That went really fast. In fact, I just finished getting the other one going. So that canner is going now, and I can work on some other things for the day. But it's gonna take a long time. I'm gonna actually time this so I can get an idea. I'm guessing like a couple hours to cool down. I completely forgot to record taking them out of the other canner, so I'll show you this one on my living room floor. But after the pressure canning cools down, for the most part, it has just kind of a last minute, 10 minute cool down timer for you, which is awesome if you need to do any of those like last minute things like figure out where on earth these jars are going to go. I believe when you're water bathing, the timer might be five minutes for the cool down, but pressure canning, it's 10. So I've got one minute left, so I'm gonna get all my stuff ready and then we'll get these out. All right. <laughs> So now that it's finished, you press this X and count to three. One, two, three. And it brings it back to just the normal mode. So after I press the X, then I'm gonna be taking them out, but I wanna make sure my vent pipe is down. Now on occasion, mine has still been up when it says it's done. Now what's a, what that is saying is that there's pressure in there, but I'm sure there have been times when there's condensation in there. I would probably always go with, wait till it goes down I have tapped it before with something, not my hand, um, and it's fallen down, but um, sometimes there is like a little pressure and I don't want to mess with that. So I let it come down on its own, maybe like an extra minute, and then I'm going to open it up. If for some reason you opened it and there was still pressure in here, you're opening up a hole, so it's only going to shoot out this small hole, not in your face, maybe on your hand, depending on what you're using to open it. So we ended up with 10 quarts of potatoes. There are so many more to do, but it is supper time. We gotta get supper finished up and the rest will just have to wait for another day. So if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. And he's back. Glad you guys see me again. <laughs> Bye.